hello, hello, hello. It is Monday <laughs> and it's time for Pop and Politics. We are talking about the latest in hot topics, news and entertainment. I'm KJ along with my amazing co-host. Once again, we have Crystal Jenkins. Hey guys. <laughs> and Shelly E. Hi everybody. All right. So join the conversation by leaving a comment on YouTube or Twitter. We will check the comments periodically throughout the show. And don't just comment, subscribe. If you miss us here on YouTube, watch us on Rumble, or you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify under the name Pop and Politics. We are an independent media. And if you want to support what we do, your super chats and donations go a long way in helping us produce conservative content. We really appreciate you guys for doing that. Every night we go live here. We have you guys, our community, uh, help us and assist us with that. So thank you so much. Uh, this is not just a podcast. As I mentioned, we're a community. We are a movement of God-fearing, truth-seeking, America-loving people that understand we are living in urgent times and there is a target on our backs, all because we choose freedom. Absolutely. But we must continue to stand. Let's stand together and subscribe. That way we can amplify this rallying call for freedom. All right, ladies, let's set it off. Let's set it off. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get right into it. We're starting off tonight uh, with a viral interview that occurred over the weekend with John Legend. He is an R&B singer and songwriter and Jen Psaki. So we know her as uh, the stringy haired redhead who used to be the White House uh, uh, correspondent for was it? It was Obama, right? Or was it Biden? No, 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 it's for Biden. Okay, Biden. Okay, jump ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as they do, you know, we know that as soon as they leave the White House, they usually the 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 natural uh, pattern of things is for them to go right on to MSNBC, where she is pretending to be an independent news person when she obviously is not. Right, she was the press secretary. Uh, and so he was with her this weekend and blasting uh, former President Trump. It starts uh, already. It yeah, starts it, of already. course it does. We've been talking about this now for the last several days, not uh, him, but just leftist uh, media personalities, famous people, public people, all going down that same train. That train is never late. Trump's a racist. The <laughs> racist. Here he is. Take a look here at this clip of his part of his interview. Well, uh, growing up in Springfield, Ohio, I had many family members that interacted with the criminal justice system. Some of them were in prison. Some of them were in jail. My own mother had spent time in jail. Um, and so when we talk about pretrial freedom, when we talk about um, reforming the way uh, we, we think about uh, punishment in our criminal legal system. Uh, it really does hit home. You've been working on this for years now. You're mm -hmm. not new to this issue. Why is there such a disconnect out there about this issue? Well, the reason why we care so much about pretrial freedom is because our jails end up housing so many people and they're not set up to make people's lives better. Um, and what ends up happening is people who are innocent, until they're proven guilty. So in our system, everybody knows that. You watch Law and Order, you watch mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the life and times of Donald Trump, every trial that he's a part of, you know, you notice he's not spending time in jail before he goes to trial. He's innocent until he's proven guilty. Uh, and we all know that, but uh, what happens mm -hmm. with folks who can't afford bail is they have to languish in jail uh, until their case. I think what ends up happening is we get kind of. So I want to stop it right there. See, this is the left. <laughs> they just go out here and they run their mouth. They have no inkling or understanding of the way the law works, the constitution works, nothing. I want to start off with you, Shelly, on this. What is your response to what he said? 
I mean, see, if be- Jen Saki was objective, she mm-hmm. would have asked him, well, how come that same principle doesn't apply to the J6ers who are sitting in jail, rotting over beyond 180 days, no less, not getting bail at all, not even given a trial date, and sometimes not even giving contacts with their lawyers. I wonder she, why didn't she ask him that? John Legend is a legend full of bunk. That's what he is, a legend full of bunk. All he does, he sings well, you know, he looks good, he says the right thing, but of course they're gonna they're gonna find a way to bring up Trump. And number number two, I don't know, I do know why, but I'm just gonna say I don't know why they the the left they pick each other as if they are representative of most of America, and they're not. John Legend might represent. Um, less than 1% of people, and that's usually the people in Hollywood who he hobnobs with. He Mm -hmm. doesn't represent most people. He doesn't live in the real world. He lives in some fantasy world, a legend in his own mind. They are full of it. John Legend, Chrissy, all the children too, and so is Jen Psaki. Yeah, Yeah. I I want to get you in on this, Crystal, and speech, especially since you said Shelly, about them living in La La Land. That's where they live. His yeah. wife lives online where she bullies people uh, all the time. We can get to that. He's married to Chrissy Teigen, supermodel, she- and she's a nut in her half. Oh, both yeah. of them are nuts with TDS syndrome. And also they both were whack jobs during COVID. Mask, 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 jab, jab, jab. Crystal, what are your thoughts to what he said? He's been cucked for a while. Like, I mean, like, uh, like his music, you know, we can appreciate ordinary people, but I'm telling you, like, this is a cucked man and his wife, his wife runs his household. Like Christy Teigen, first of all, her and her fake kind of like oppression, like she somehow speaks for black people and speaks for the press. I want to ask that chick, when is, how many migrants has she housed in in her house? Like they, these not people, one. not, not a single one, not a single one. And that's how they are. Like these celebrities are not our leaders at all. They think they speak for us. And if you really want to talk about criminal justice reform, can we please mention the only president that actually tackled that issue not even your black one barack hussein obama didn't tackle it president trump is the only president that tackled and listened to y'all little black selves and tried to make some kind of changes he's the only president joe biden is trying to forgive loans and hand out abortions so good luck sir yeah, and I want to I want to get into what he was talking about. This whole idea of uh, what do you call it? Free? F- he called it something free? Uh, um, freedom, bail, like so bail, like like freedom before. Uh, oh, yeah, the bail, word. Free before trial. Free freedom before trial. Free bail. Right. They don't free even free celebrate. Trial. They just release you. Right. I wanted to talk about, but he used a specific phrasing which was odd. I had not heard it before. Uh, but I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about what he said about you're innocent before proven guilty. You know, we do understand that is the case. You are, of course, innocent before the proven guilty. But we do have this thing called the Constitution. Yes. The Eighth Amendment bail clause prohibits bail that is excessive, exactly. and it's not about whether it's unaffordable, which he mentioned in his interview. Yes, you're innocent before proven guilty, but the purpose of bail is to tie a defendant to a jurisdiction and guarantee he'll show up for trial. Yeah, right. Judges can and should consider a person's financial status at the time of setting bail, but the Constitution does not require that bail be available in all cases or that it be affordable. It's not set up for that. It's set up to make sure they show back up. You should yeah, have considered your financial status before you went out right. there and committed the daggone crime. Exactly. I'm sorry. And, I, and, I, and honestly, I like yeah. I've been through the justice system, you guys. It sucks. It literally sucks. I remember when I got a misdemeanor and they charged me with a felony and I had to pay. That is just the way the system works. You pray and you go through it. And sometimes it's fair. Sometimes it's not. That is called life. And I'm sorry, Mr. Legend. You're not God. You can't fix it for every single brown person or white person or anybody. 
Right. But KJ, to your point, what he fails to mention is that now in these leftist progressive states and cities, they are releasing hardened, violent criminals yes. without bail. They're just sending them through the revolving doors. And guess who they're coming out to attack? Not John Legend, not Chrissy. They're coming to attack, you know, you, me, our family members, our friends, because these violent thugs, violent criminals, murderers, rapists, uh, carjackers, whatever, they are released by the people that he supports. He's, he's full of it. They are so fake. They care nothing about what goes on in everyday people's lives. This is only to prop up maybe his next album. Maybe, you know, again, Crystal said he's a cuck. Well, he's a cuck and Chrissy is a cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, and my thing is, is that you got 24 hours in a day, sir. This is the only thing you can figure out what to do. Like, like there are so many issues in the black community mm -hmm. that they can solve if they wanted to improve it. I guarantee you, exactly. well, it's not. And mind you, I am proponent of um good living conditions. Like, I feel like, I feel like if we're going to do something as far as prison reform, we should reform the conditions because we should make it more humane we should you know probably do something with conjugal visits and all of that that's all ideal but how about we do something about the conditions in baltimore sir for the people who are not criminals how about we do something for the conditions of the schools how about we do something for the conditions at the border the americans that are living right. in hell right yeah, I, 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 not only that but what what i think it's, it's it's really funny that these leftists what they're tr what they end up doing is bringing us back to a society of not only chaos but barbarism yes, barbarism yes. am i saying that right barbarism barbarism right mm -hmm. and so when i say that you know because i was doing some research on the eighth amendment and cash bail the whole reason cash bail was initially instituted was because prior to that we had a system where kin, you, uh, family members were avenging their murder, uh, right. of, avenging the murder of kin. Private citizens would kill offenders. It was it was wild wild west. Yeah. So they created this cash bail system. But now the leftists have you know these leftist prosecutors. They're not uh, in, enforcing the laws. And what we have now is sort of we we're, we're regressing back. To yes, yes. that, right. because they won't enforce the laws that are exactly. on the books. Yes. Exactly. And you talking about prison reform, Crystal? I'm with you to have humane prison environments. Yeah. Well, if he wants so much to reform prisons, how about getting the dicks that pretend that they're chicks out of women's prisons because they go in there and they rape the women prisoners because they pretend that they're women? I bet he won't touch that. Oh, and no. Jen Saki, I bet she she never even thought to ask him that. He's not allowed. He's not allowed to say anything about that. And that, that's what I'm saying. Like these entertainers, like I'm so sick of them because they ain't solving a daggone thing in the black community. And the black you community is not even integral enough to say, you know what? Shut up. Y'all been talking for so many years and it ain't making nothing better for us. Let's try it the white man's way. <laughs> let's try. Let's try it that way. Well, well let's I want to continue with the video because he then goes in on a rant about Trump being racist. Uh, here we, we go. Uh, here we go. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing. Oh, here we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that interacted with the criminal justice system. Some of them were and second. housing so many people and they're not set up to make people, you know, that you watch Law and Order, you watch mm -hmm. uh, the proven it's guilty. It's always the light skin one, you A story or Fox News or local news will run a story and they'll say, this one person got in get... my house and we talked about it. And one of the things that Here you are. hear from Trump's supporters is that he signed the First Step Act in 2018. You just said that. He's a partner in this effort. What do you say to people who say, oh, no, he, he would be he would be an ally. Look what he did in 2018. He's, he's not been an ally. I mean, I think the First Step Act was fine. Uh, there it was, was fine. Uh, it was fine. It was a very kind of small reform. Oh, and to be God. honest, most of the reform we need is on the local and state level because uh, most incarceration is local and state, uh, and most of the laws that end up. Uh, he don't know what he's talking about. He's not, he cannot give Trump his flowers. He can't. Uh, 
the same time, you know, he's claiming credit for th those small things. He's also well, saying, you know, if people uh, are stealing something, they should get shot in the middle of the store. Uh, when we protested uh, the killing of George Floyd, he was uh, advocating for the military to shoot us in the streets. Um, uh, he's made it clear. They make up stuff out of whole just make it up. Black people are inferior. Uh, like he believes that to the core in his bones he wouldn't let us live in his buildings uh back you in the won't day. let us live in your damn house you hear some of the stray comments he makes he clearly believes in a genetic hierarchy of okay 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 so, <laughs> what what is he talking about what is he talking about they always do this they hurl all of these accusations about trump with no evidence with no. no evidence. Oh no, no instead of her asking it. him to provide the receipts, she sits there and preaches to the choir. <laughs> Don't do that. So oh, then we'll talk about first off, he's talking he, again, they've thrown out this whole thing about Trump being <laughs> racist. We talked about this last week, I believe, and showed the video you had. Jesse Jackson, yep. you had Al Sharpton. Oh, yeah. Oprah. His name. Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> Praising Trump's name, talking about him when he was, you know, in the, doing the business within New York City and across the country, across the world, how he had helped African American entrepreneurs rebuild, bring businesses behind minor for minorities. Yep. One, two, was it Fifth Avenue or Wall Street within all, New York City? All, and all up and down Manhattan. Right. Mimi Leaks. I mean, like everybody <laughs> loved Trump. Let me tell you something. And 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 it's so funny because I'm watching him. He's taught, he's trying to equate, um, he's trying to minimize the first step act. He was like, Oh, we need something done locally. Well, first of all, he's he's the president, you know, like right. he does things federally he and then we don't understand that that's exactly. what i'm talking about no, it was, no, it was no, something no. small we need small. <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about these actors somebody said it and he does he needs to just shut up sit his old light bright ass down exactly. and play exactly. the piano like he play does piano. That's and all change the baby diapers you remember you remember the commercial <laughs> Pickle the ivory. That's all he needs to do. Stay at home, sir. Change your baby diapers while your wife works. And yes, do, do that. Right. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And, you know, again, I am not against interracial dating. I am not. You do what you love. Love who you love. Uh, whatever. But this man doesn't like black women. Okay. And I know this for a fact. I have a friend. He was here in Baltimore, Maryland many years ago. She is white. And he told her that he does not like black women. So I only say that to say these leftists get up here and talk about black this, black that, and black this and black that. And they don't even like black people. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. They and don't even like them. It is they're always pulling, out, light, all, they're right. pulling out all the stops. They are afraid. They are very afraid. And they also know that this New York case is bogus. So they are going to come, they're going to try to bring everything they can to the kitchen sink just well, to well, keep first. Vidal or whoever it is, I am not lying. If you're talking oh. about me, no, no, he, no. He said, he said JL. He said, you know, you lying. So disappointing, JL, John Legend. Oh, John okay. Legend. He, this is you. true. The you. girl told me this. She said, the oh, diet, we got him. you. He we does got not you. like black women. <laughs> he does not like them. No, but so he, okay. So going back to what he said, he could not give Trump credit at all. Mm -hmm. And then he started to bring up some of the things that Trump has been accused of in this past. And then he even goes to say, oh, the George Floyd murder. First of all, George Floyd, it's came, come out that he was not murdered. I'm sorry, blacks. He was not murdered. He was murdered. If fentanyl was a person, then that is who murdered him. Free 
Uh, free. What's the boy name? God, I done forgot it. That. Oh my God, um, the officer. Um, officer. I can't yes. um, Chauvin. Free Chauvin. Chauvin. Okay. Chauvin. Yes. Free Chauvin. Chauvin. And then second of all, he starts to talk about um Donald Trump, who is accused. Oh look, <laughs> Donald Trump is accused of not renting to black folks back in the day. You guys, I am from New York City. When Donald Trump was renting houses. Um, New York City was struck by the crack epidemic. I can tell you a lot of black landlords that did not rent to black folks, not because they didn't like black folks. Because like, let me tell you something. They Trump can't pay the bills. Yeah, exactly. Trump was always about the money. OK, green is all he cared about. But you could not guarantee in that time that you a black family would not be affected or or driven out of an apartment or something because of um, the crack epidemic. So right. Trump was accused of this and so many other landlords was accused of this and they keep just beating the same old drum. And it's so bad that we just cannot move on. We it's can't move on. Bad, but we, again, this is, this is what happens when you look at the outcome yes. of policies or the outcome of things that happen and not go into why they're happening. You know, it's sad to say, but there are a, pro a large proportion of inner city black people that have a history of not paying the bills. And yes. generally when you go to rent or even buy a home, but when you're going to rent, they have to look at that history. Yeah. You either don't have it or the history is bad yeah. and you're not going to get landlords to rent to you yes absolutely why rent? should you why right. should you i mean that's their property they have to pay taxes and upkeep on it they have and to loans. make an income for their families right they take they take the risk with the mortgages and all the loans that they get why should they um just put you in a building just because your skin happens to be looking like ours right. yeah yeah and and so, so i just i really wish that we could just just move on. He's the only person that they hold those types of things account to. They don't talk about the history of 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 um, Joe Biden. They don't talk about the history yeah. of him saying he didn't want uh, the, these people to be in a racial jungle. Now we are conservative, so we don't play tit for tat. I don't believe that Joe Biden was any more racist than any. Oh, I do. Oh, know I what do. I'm saying? Yeah. Any any person back in his day, like I'm not oh, going to okay. use that. I'm not going to use that as a talking point, but I don't like when they do it to Donald Trump. Like it really pisses me off because they're afraid, especially in 2024, they are afraid, very afraid. They know that heretofore, nothing has stopped Trump nor his supporters. And in fact, his support has only grown, period. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, we did, again, we wanted to set the record straight on this interview because this John Legend interview has gone viral. It's a lie. Um, it's been all over social media and it's blatant lies. It's lies and misinformation. And we wanted to set the record straight. Uh, Jen, Psaki is lie. Jen Psaki is a lie in and of herself. I mean, not that it's her fault, but just a few weeks ago, they fired before they even hired Rhonda McDaniels because she used to be a political whatever you want to call her but look at all of them now she's interviewing she's some quote-unquote faux journalist now she just came from the white house but she but she's okay because right. she has the same ideology as these people yeah right right yeah uh i do want to uh thank our super <laughs> chatters i gotta shout you guys out oh my gosh we appreciate you so much that's cynthia she says preach it crystal yes. Yes. <laughs> well, we gotta get them together <laughs> Frankly, he says, I am so yeah. proud of you, black ladies, seeing the truth. Oh, it took a while, you. frankly. Thank it took you. a while, but we came over. All right. Abraham, John Legend has a face that looks easy to draw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. probably could. <laughs> Gloria, thank you so much, Gloria. Thank you, Gloria. All right. Mark, hey, Mark. Mark. That's our buddy. Love you as always. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Thank, thank you. you Mark. Love you right back. All right. 
So uh, again, we are going to continue on with this. I've uh, got lots to bring to you all tonight. Thanks so much for hanging in with us and watching. Again, we are live in studio every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And then we do these virtual pop-ups on Monday, Wednesdays, and then Friday or Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Monday and then Friday or Saturday. And then we're all in the studio live on Wednesdays. Yeah. So you can always uh, connect with us. We got a lot coming up for you guys. We're going to revamp some things and got a lot of surprises coming up for our our um, our tried and true crew here for Poppin' Politics. So definitely we appreciate you. All right. So we are moving right along. Um, again, we got to set the record straight. I mean, you know, we got to tell the truth yeah. and push back against these leftists who who continue to spew this this stuff. That's this, it's this untrue. And yeah. that's um, but this might be a different thing. We're talking about Bill Maher. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, we're it's talking about so um, he actually he did. A, he was on um, I think it was this weekend, Friday. I think it was so wishy-washy. I'm tired. I'm tired. KJ, one minute we talk about yay. And then the next minute he say something stupid. And then the next minute we say yay. And then the next minute he say something stupid. So this is a yay day. Yeah, this is a yay day. Um, Got to give him a, you know, credit where credit is due. He's fickle. And, and he's off a little bit too. He's, he's off. off. He's, he's off a little bit. Um, But he ripped Democrats uh, uh this weekend in a quiet on the set rant. Uh, where he went in on woke ideology uh, and then also talking about the HBO's, I'm sorry, I think it was Nickelodeon. Um, and Nickelodeon their, and Disney World. Disney, right, sexualization of children. Yeah, it was uh, on Max. Yeah, it was on Yeah, Max. right, on Max, right. Okay, so I have a bit of it. I want to play this for you all so you can see exactly what he said. Gave some praise to my boy, DeSantis. Uh, he said like something him. nice about him, says he wasn't wrong when he called out Disney for sexualizing children and that liberals were willing to overlook it because he's Republican. Take a look. <laughs> but I also think it's every adult's job to protect them. Have you all been watching the Max documentary called Quiet on Set, mm -hmm. The Dark Side of Kids TV? OMG. <laughs> Nickelodeon, it wasn't a studio, it was Neverland Ranch with craft services. Whoa! <laughs> and you were probably there. <laughs> it is just scene after scene, clip after clip. Oh my God! The child stars of their day being subjected to obviously inappropriate, highly sexualized degradation and quite a few pickles going through glory holes. Wow. I was grossed out and I've gone camping with John Waters. <laughs> so I don't know if this documentary is the talk of your town, but it is out here because it didn't just expose a dangerous workplace. It also exposed hypocrisy because it must be pointed out that when the evil governor of Florida there We're saying is. the exact same thing he about sure did. and creepy stuff at Disney that liberals now find intolerable at Nickelodeon. He was dismissed as a hick and a bigot. But why would a kid's content factory like Disney be all that different? Here we go. So I wanted to just bring that to you. And we know why. This is what they want to do. They mm -hmm. want to sexualize children because they're full Marxists. And that's the Marxist way. Shelly, yeah. what do you think about what he said there? Uh, oh, let me, I'm going to defend Bill in that many people, conservatives for the most part, they, well, leftists hate him now, but, but he's never been a left, a, a leftist or a conservative. He's always been a classical liberal and many people don't understand what that means. However, there have been some times I've disagreed with him, but for the most part, he has been consistent in his, I guess you want to call it politics, if you will. Number two. These people are pedophiles. Yeah. Bill has Bill has never been accused, that, to my knowledge, of pedophilia, of tickling the children's no, no, no. eyes. 
No, I'm just saying. So what he is saying, he, yes. he, he has been against that. He has always, as far as I know, uh, to some degree protected children in that sense. Now, I don't think he has children, but he has never been far left to, to want to use children in this manner. And what he has said, he is now he is persona non grata on the left. They they are upset with him because he's telling the truth. Right. These people are pedophiles. They want to diddle your children. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he's always been. I don't know anything about him. Uh, Yet children or now I know he's a freak. Um, he's a stone cold freak. Uh, with with women with you with know women. of age women. You know, remember he exactly. had a long tawdry affair. With, what with they women, with all. adult women, right, right? But with um Superhead, um, you guys don't know. Look her up. Um, I know, Corinne Stephens. Corinne Stephens, shout is out. A, um, video model. She's a, what do you, you guess you can call her that? But he was dating her for many years. Um, but I don't know anything no. about him messing around with kids. What are your Super thoughts right. here, Crystal? I, I I see it a little bit different. I seen the Quiet on set, and I don't know. In the age of Me Too. I'm I'm a little leery of this stuff, you guys. I'm not saying that inappropriate individual things happened with kids. And I believe that that's um, really parenting and you have to like watch your kid and you have to be, but if um, you have to be um, like very diligent in making sure that your kid is not exposed to certain things. But I actually saw an interview with Dan um, Schneider and he explained his behavior and I actually wasn't mad at how he explained it. I think that we are very much of sexualized culture now. And when he was doing it, he said this and and I thought I thought it was very interesting. You have to go back and watch it. He said I did things that kids thought were funny and they made it sexual. Like kids always thought feet was stinky. Kids don't know what a glory hole is. They don't know when 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 you're squeezing something on Amanda Bynes face, they don't know it's uh like a erection like a um what do you call it? Like somebody, they don't like know. Somebody, that the orgasm, ejaculation. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, I don't think anybody's saying it. Yes, you know, they different. were. I'm telling you on the quiet on set, they are making it like, oh, it was so sexual because the like, like the, the kids will squeeze something in Amanda's face and they'll be like, look how sexual that is. And the men around knew it was sexual. But he said, he said, I did things that kids thought were funny and it wasn't, it wasn't, like sexual at the time like now we're such a sexual society so when you see a girl like amanda vines um did the little thing with her feet and you know she used to always put her feet in her mouth and kids thought that was funny now we know that perverts out there love to suck on feet well, okay. and we're so making it sexual yeah. that's I how i'm not saying no, 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 no. i hear what you're saying i gotta so push back I, on Oh, I, mean, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, Crystal. Okay, we know that babies like to put their feet in their mouths, right? I get it, right? But when you have when you have young people who have come out, and I can't think of the um the girl and the boy's name that were on, they were on Megan Kelly recently. Mm -hmm. They talk about when they were Nickelodeon stars. The yeah. point, one of the things that they said was that these things might be funny, but when they were made to do them, they felt uncomfortable. They had, some um, people had to, they had to clear the room, right? Parents were not even allowed sometimes in these, for some of these scenes. So yeah. in that aspect, I can hear what you're saying. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Kids do a lot of, boys put things in holes, right? I yeah. mean, normally all things being equal, but when you have this culture, this mindset, mm -hmm. and you can see over time that these shows, they get a little bit more, I don't know, perverted or oh, maybe that not, may not be the right word but it to me right I mean, they get a little bit more perverted every time it's like they gotta push the envelope a little bit more even with younger and younger children yeah i don't and disagree that, i don't mm -hmm. just i don't disagree with you like they were talking about amanda Bynes being in the tub like in being in a hot tub with dan schneider mind you they were fully closed and people made something like sexual about it and i'm like i i don't know if we were that sexualized that we but but i kind of feel like now everything is be like it's like to me with these kids it's it's almost sounding to me like the me too movement it's like you're no, making no, no, something no, no. I, I gotta disagree something. i gotta disagree because when you take everything into context i agree when you take if, if this were one-offs mm -hmm. then right. i would say okay maybe people are reading a little bit too much into this 
But no, this is a systematic right. thing that they are doing from the writers all the way down to the actors. They are doing this to sexualize children. And right. I actually talked about this guy. That, please take a look at my other channel, 830 Show, where I really delve in to how highly weird they are sick. They are sick and they are they are actually after children. You know, I talked about the new movie, Poor Things, which was, you know, it's it was won the Oscar. It had in there um, the actress, I forgot, Mark Ruffalo and Emma Stone. Emma mm. won Best Actress. The movie took home tons of Oscars. They were push, push, pushing this movie to be like the greatest thing of the year. And it was a sick movie about a woman with the child mentality of an eight-year-old being bent over every way of a way. I mean, the sex in this thing, it was really porn. And it, when you really look into the deeper meaning behind this, they were using her as a child. It was sick. And this is what yeah. this is all they've been doing ever since, using children and trying to sexualize them. I in agree. 2014, CNN yeah. report discovered that at least 35 Disney employees um, had been mm -hmm. arrested for sex crimes against right. children. This is not a coincidence. I when agree. One child star, Alyssa Stoner, confessed she only narrowly survived the toddler to train rep pipeline. They're coming out talking about it yeah. now. It's, yeah, this, no, is how, this is how groomers. This is what groomers do. They 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 give a they do a little or give a little here and there, and they get the children acclimated at every stage, so that you're breaking down their natural modesty outside outside of toddlers. Because we know all of us had toddlers, right? And we know a toddler will go somewhere and you look, and the dad on toddlers naked, right? And they're laughing out because they have no sense of modesty. But generally speaking. Preschool and up, and maybe to around even the teenage years, children have a natural built in modesty. But yeah. when you have these people who are breaking it down little by little and they take away that innocence and that natural innate modesty that children have, again, uh, toddlers are like, like puppies and animals, they're not even aware of themselves, right? Right? They look in the mirror, they don't know who they're looking at. So, um, well, I, I agree. I agree with you guys because I believe Holly Weird is demonic. I, I, I believe that they are trying to sexualize children. I do mm -hmm. believe that. But I don't want to get into a habit of every single because if you want to, you guys, every single behavior, you can add a sexual connotation to it. I agree with that. you. Dear. On every single. And they are starting to make it like and, and, and it's almost like you're making it up. Kind of like it's like when Amanda Bonds was putting her foot in her mouth they were like look how sexual that is or like when they were squirting stuff at, look how sexual and they weren't even thinking about it maybe the producers were thinking about it I have no doubt that the producers were thinking about it. but we have to change the minds of our children you have to oversee your children that even if your child is in Hollywood there is no way no way that I would ever let my child on a set that I am not privy to. And so exactly. what we need to we need to get strong as parents. And so are you saying that there should never be any child stars? Like no, what are I'm we not, saying? No, your, no. your points are valid. We can go too far yes. one way or the other. Yes. What are we no, saying? I think it's, it's the perversion and the sickness that is you can do that with it. anything, Kate. No, no, no. Anything. But this is it is nothing but that. And what I'm saying is uh you know. I think that personally, me, I would not want my child a part of that industry. I just wouldn't because there are too many perverted, sick, demonic people, not just working the industry, but in charge of Your the industry. Your child is very this is, this is their agenda. It's not Your like- you know, hey, KJ, your child is very, very gifted. And oh, I know. I've been asked. People ask all the time for my so child should, to be a model, to be so an should, athlete. Should your child, so should your child it. not be able to because they're sick yeah. people? Yeah, I, don't want the, I don't want him a part of it. I just don't. The, and um, I mean, he he become if it, I'm all any for any of our children when they become 18, 21, they can make of the decisions themselves, right? Yeah, I, just, I, I, I mean, I understand, I understand what you're saying too, KJ. Um, there are some industries that lend themselves more to the abuse 
and uh, perversion, if you will, of children. Some lend themselves more to that. But you're right too, Crystal. If my child was in that environment, there will be no way that somebody, my child is going to be in any goddamn room, whatever. Yeah. If I'm like, I can't come in. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. No. I mean, what I'm saying though is, it's not even about. I'm not talking about the children. I don't believe they they're innocent. The actors, the child actors, and most of them are. What I'm saying is the agenda behind it all is so wicked and so demonic. So is the health care agenda. You, so we're not going to let our kids be doctors. We're not going to let them make money. We're not going to make. We cannot do that with our kids. You're actually comparing yes. the medical industry to yes. what's going on in Hollywood. It's demonic the, and um, The medical industry is the ones doing the operations to transfer out, quote unquote, transform them. So are we. Well, that's a small sector. Uh, yes, not I true. agree. I agree that they are doing it. But it's a small sector of the medical industry. That's not where they're making all of their money. No, I agree, right I agree. Now. And you I think agree, Hollywood's agree, making like, all of their money off of children? I, what I'm saying is it's conservative even, have I'm, to change. We have, we have to set a new narrative. We can't just say, oh, if my child is gifted, I have to like round and be very vocal about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Just like if, if, if my child was a, a, a doctor, yeah. I'm not going to say, don't be a part of the medical community. You have to stand up. A, and that's, a, that's a reach. That's a okay. I'm I guess saying. ultimately what I mean, we're saying I is, saying. I guess ultimately what we're saying is, um, there's really no way to put our children in bubbles. Yes, I mean you can't. Not. Of course, I mean, not. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying put them in the fire. I'm not saying willingly or we should just take them and drop them in the fire either. But we can't wrap them in in bubble wrap at the same time. Of when I, I when I say that we have to explain or teach or tell our children some things, unfortunately, we may have to tell them some things so that they can deal with these things in, in the real world. I mean, we just can't shelter them to a degree like we used to be able to. I or, totally or not even there, but I don't think that choosing and again it's a personal opinion. It's a personal yeah, yeah, yeah. position. Yeah, of course. Know. But I don't think that you, you have an industry. Not only is it behind the scenes sexualization and demonic and wickedness, but the products, the products that they're putting out. Even if you had a child star or a teenager. Let's say they didn't go through anything on the set or, or production of nasty, wickedness, sexualization. Right. Nine times out of ten, the product that they're part of will have some type of wickedness, sexualization, or just nastiness. It is perver it has it has it gotten into every scene of the of, of the of the acting of the industry. Everything. Everything is from the writing to the producing to what they put out to the people on sets. It is permeated, is permeated everything. And so I just don't see how anyone could put a child within that, that environment and think that they are going to come out unscathed. Not I, even I, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear That's what I'm saying. saying. That's all I'm saying. I just I just think I just think that if you want to sexualize children, you will do it any way that you want. So you'll do it through Hollywood. You'll do it through the daycare industry. You'll do it. You get what I'm saying? Like if you are a pervert and you want to sexualize children, it is up to the parents to be freaking relentless. I am telling you, I don't, mm -hmm. they would, they do it in dance. They do it in gymnastics. You're going to take your child out of gymnastics. Like you, they you, do it in sports. Reaching. They're you're abusing reaching. all these kids in sports teams. All the coaches is sleeping. With, reaching, with the child out of no, I'm not reaching. What I'm saying is sports the gymnastics, the, those pro the product that comes out of that is not in any way, or most ways, at least sexual. You know, basketball players playing on a basketball court, I don't know how you're going to sexualize a basketball game. You know, movies, plays, no, I hear what you're saying, music, AJ. all of it is sexualized. And I'm not even talking about the behind the scenes portion of it. I've actually, I've actually worked within the industry. I know people, every part of it is sexual. Again, it is everyone's own opinion. I think I do think there's an agenda. I do think they have an agenda. Um, to, you know, they want to again, they want to tease our children with these whatever modeling, acting, all these contracts. Um, uh, what's her name? That poor child still haven't found her murderer, Jean Benet. I, I mean, know. I think I, I think know. We, right. I think we as adults, we um 
we push children into places where they really shouldn't be at certain times, mm -hmm. whether that's age or time of day. We do that. We take away their innocence um, and we don't allow them to develop and grow. I'm going to say not totally unscathed, but in certain areas, they should not be scathed and they should not be put in places where they really have they don't have the defenses or the equip. They're not equipped to deal with those things. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, we do have to move on again, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are on fire talking about the lies and misinformation pushed against Trump. Now we've moved to Bill Maher and his takedown of Democrats and the uh, child entertainment industry. Next, we're moving on to Katie Couric. Uh, so let me see here. <laughs> You're just breaking my heart today, <laughs> oh. right? Katie Kirk. Oh, you were bad, Katie Kirk. Yeah, here she oh, is. No. Yeah, I never liked Katie, her. Katie, get a life. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah, so she's slammed. She's been slammed as it's out of touch for, me. for claiming Trump's MAGA driven by anti intellectualism. Oh, and jealous of the elites. <laughs> yeah, I have a clip here. So let's I saw see. that. I saw that. Oh my gosh. And she's so smart. Yeah. yeah. I know. Um, uh, uh, she used to, the, they used to call that's her the dumb one. That's why she don't know what a woman is. She she support people that don't know what a woman is. Take a look here. Oh no, not not no. what blacks and whites make today. That that's I mean, it's against the law. Here we go. For a long time to pay someone less. Than, right. Uh, no, no, no. But but I mean, I'm sure there is a, a difference because of of course the legacy of our history. There's going to be huge disparities and everything. No, I'm talking about like net worth like what before we go on do they ever talk about anything else it all works. these, all it these works. white liberals it sit works. around talking about all oh, the black people they're so racist against black people. i mean this is all they talk about I know. white so guilt old. they are so they feel so guilty because again we're jealous of them so we're it's supposed to be jealous of them i mean so it is I just had to say that. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh. Hold on. Worth. Like, you know, the white number is, I don't know what it is, but it's, it, you know, it's a hundred thousand dollars or something. And the black is like crazy low. Like and family because, wealth. And then, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. from, of course, and that's because and everything else and grow and keeping people down and just our despicable, horrible history. Um, that to me is like where the biggest need this for I can't equal, stand Bill Maher. Equal teams are. but no. I but I don't know how you do it like quickly. I, I think it's just something that I think I you believe in or that some people do. But I'm talking about overall income inequality and even taking oh, race yeah. out of it. The huge chasm between the uber 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 wealthy. And yes. people who don't have $400 in an emergency. Ridiculous. And you it, ain't giving them not one damn cent of yours. Never been such a stark divide. Right. And I feel like, to your oh. point, Bill, the socioeconomic disparities are a lot, and class resentment is a lot what, and well, anti intellectualism and like elitism that. is what is driving many of these, these anti establishment. Which are Trump voters right. or anti establishment? Absolutely. So I think that is a huge problem that we have to address. I mean, globalization, Give up your you know, money, the transition from an industrial to a we'll spread it all out around New York. Society. I mean, I, I, and I don't know if you've ever been jealous of some what someone else has or resentful. It is such a corroding. Oh, she's so she's so Bitter. concerned about corroded out. I'm so corroded. Feeling. Oh. And I think that when oh. people who are really struggling see people who have everything oh. and are on top oh. of that looking down on them, it is oh just a recipe God. for such anger and resentment and Ooh. grievance. Oh All right. So here we are. So I thought well, she liked the people, the little poor blacks and the little poor people. Right, that the, little pet, the little pets, the little pets. So there it is. Um, and the crazy thing is they don't address that under Trump administration, 
that gap had started to tighten. Oh, yeah, for sure. They don't address it that. It has widened so bad under this administration. Absolutely. And for her, to, for, for her to sit there with her like white liberal mouth, and this is why I told you Bill Mark irritates me because he don't know which side he on. He is he is a very um fearful man that he he don't know. Like it's wherever the wind blows, like I'll agree with this, but I can't agree with this. And for her and him to be sitting there talking about anti-intellectualism. Right. <laughs> these are the dumbest people that I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, and we know these people. You you guys, y'all, we're educated. I don't think people understand. Like, we have all went to university, you know, have gone, you know, to, like, I know Shelly has gone further probably. But these people are not smart when you can't no. even address the basics like the fact that your pe the people that you care about so much cannot get an apartment right now they're all mm -hmm. living with their parents the fact that bacon and eggs and the cost of everything else has gone up but you tell us we're doing better and the economy is wonderful oh. you won't talk about the fact that the dollar is now worth 83 cents one dollar is now worth 83 you won't talk about any of that and you think that we're not the yeah, we're so, you know they just want they just want black people or poor people to be their little pets so they can feel like you know they they doing something right when she was on with Brian Gumbles I think they call her what America's sweetheart when right, she was on with right. Brian, she was she was dumb then yeah right, right. she was mm -hmm. dumb then when she was on with Brian Gumble and both of them were as arrogant and 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 snobbish as they still are with her little ankle uh, varicose vein ankles and feet with them damn shoes on I know she you know is. she got on my nerves she just she just got on my nerves on that day of her interview I mean nobody's jealous of you Winch but I don't see her breaking down her bank account to go and nope. distribute you know with this uh, equity right equitable distribution she ain't distributing none of hers no reparations oh my God. no reparations they ain't talk about that nope. mm -mm. <laughs> no not at all and and this is what we're talking about you know all they talk about is give out give out hand out hand out hand out which we know it does not pull anyone out of poverty it, it does not uh take away poverty or fix the issue of poverty no jobs and things like that help people dignity get, uh, right dignity help people get out of poverty and right they didn't talk if this should have been a conversation about biden's economic policies and how they have broadened that income gap the economic gap between the rich and the poor you know you talk about and i posted this on my social media earlier today talking about something as simple as rent yeah. you know the cost of rent has gone up exponentially under yeah. this administration you I know say, this I is what like people, 30 something percent, people in 30 something, almost a third almost a third when i i think i heard last week, it was almost a third like the prices have gone up rent you know real estate and the cost of renting people can't even afford that on their on their one let alone one two incomes right i mean right. These, these people these people are I don't even know the word. They're just pathetic, right? Yeah. And they and they use these poor people or black people, whoever the pet of the day is, they use them to set to salve their to put a salve over their own fake guilt that they really don't have. They just want to look like they do and they want to look like they care. You know, I, I mean Katie Couric, Brian Gumble, all of them, not one of them have put anybody in their homes, I'm sure. I'm sure they haven't. They they will safeguard and <laughs> block off gate up their children in the private schools the 24-hour security you know homes got security more than fort knox just so they won't go around the people that they claim that they are they, that they want to care about so much they're full of it they're live they're yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, and, and i want to go on if i could just stop yeah. A little bit more about the home ownership. You know, we're talking about rent. They're talking about black people and in in in, in poverty. Um, you we all know that one of the things that gets Lift people it. out of poverty is home ownership. Right. And according to the National Association of Realtors, the home ownership rate among black Americans is 44%, whereas for white Americans, it's 72.7%. It's the largest black white home ownership rate gap in a decade. 
And it was much better under Trump. But these policies that this administration has put forth are not good. They're yeah. not good. But all these people, all these white liberals can do is sit around and whine and bitch and complain and do these pity parties, you know, about how, oh, they're so jealous of us. When, no, we want the Biden administration to put in economic policies that work. Yeah, and, and no, 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 KJ, don't speak, don't, don't speak that. Because we've seen what economic policies ha that the Democrats put in place that helps black folks in 2008 crash. We've seen what happens. Right. The fact of the matter is, is blacks, the blacks, don't prioritize these things and now they've made it harder and harder for the first time ever in history the more um single people single adults live at home with their parents that's yep. black and white it's mm -hmm. unattainable home ownership has become unattainable mm -hmm. for black and white people however at Lord. least white people will sometimes prioritize it a little bit more right. black folks got houses when um they put in that policy that uh bill clinton put in where uh what, what's it called um um it was like it was a name for it i'm, tr I'm trying to think about th what the name was and it was like um every everybody deserves a home kind of thing oh. and and so he made the um he made you remember they they had no doc loans. They had um, uh, I, I'm I, I'm trying oh, to no doc loans. I know that. Oh no no um, no. I'm trying to think about what what it was that caused the housing crash under in 2008. It's because all the getting mortgages that you really didn't qualify exactly for exactly right, no, right. mortgages that you didn't qualify for. They always try to diminish. And who does it hurt? It hurts. Oh the sub the sub the sub subprime, loans subprime, 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 subprime loans. Yes. Yes. And who does it hurt? It hurts black folks. The sad thing about it is, is nobody is talking about for the first time ever in history, 50, more than 50 percent of the mm. homes are owned by investors. Mm. That, that's never happened. So it's all I think Alex Jones and you guys you say whatever you want to about him. But he was talking about they are trying to get rid of private ownership here in America. Oh, as yeah, 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 they, are, sure. they are crushing you to own a house. Yeah. So, so these two elite people sitting here talking about, oh, um, the they're anti-elite and anti-intellectual. No, you are anti-American um, and you're anti-poor and you want somehow for people to believe that you care about them because you're sitting here talking and you have done nothing to uh, make your your side do anything to help blacks. Absolutely. And you know that 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 anti-intellectualism, that's just a code word. Now, you know, that's a code word. Basically, we're dumb. You know, uh, we're dumb. We already mm -hmm. were deplorables. Right. I mean, it. it, it whatever you want whatever um, what they call about the ones in the rural town i forget but we you know we're just so dumb and they're just so much better and they know what's best for us of course you know this little uh paternalism this elite paternalism attitude that they have again we're this we're just their little pets so they can feel like they're doing something Fuck yeah. them they get on my nerves oh I'm trying yeah. to find, yeah, it was his home ownership strategy. It was called something. I'm trying well, to. I, do, I was going to say something about that. And if we have any mortgage uh, brokers on here, please speak up in the comments. So what he was doing, and it wasn't actually new. They were doing interest only loans. Right. And so those loans are generally for a specific type of buyer. People who know that, you know what? I know I'm getting an interest only loan now. But what I'm going to do is in five years, it, right? I'm going to pay it off so it won't balloon on me. That is right. the point. But what, what people were doing was because I do know many mortgage brokers because the mortgage industry got hit hard. Real estate industry didn't really get hit hard. The, what they were doing was they if you didn't do these types of loans for these people, they just all they would do is go to somebody else who was doing it. Right. So, again, it's on the people and unfortunately many of the people that that took advantage knew exactly what they were doing most of these people were not getting a hoodwinked no they were they not knew, right they knew that they were getting an interest only loan they knew that they would have to put the money on it or it would balloon but they say right. you know what i'm going to push it down the road i'll take about i'll deal with it when that happens 
and then that's how they lost their home. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so they, if should they, never, get, they should never have qualified for those loans. Well, those right. loans are typically well, like they don't have loans now. They no, don't. No, no, those time. loans are legal. Those loans are right. legal, but they are generally reserved or they give right. towards people who have. Add, I mean, a lot of money Absolutely. because they don't they don't tend to stay in those homes for thirty years. Yeah, no, right. Shelly, what happened was is they were saying that the um the 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 documentation was racist and asking people oh, know. Oh, to verify know. their income was racist and the and and it and it wrecked us. That's why I said no. We don't we don't need any help from the Democrats. No, thank sure, you. Yeah. We're good. There are some people depending on the job. Who do have no doc loans? Where you if you not you, for no mortgage no more. Not now. I know. Not, well, not anymore, now. But back, back, back then, that time frame. I mean, oh, what, in the mid two thousands or whatever. That right. was a it boom. Was a, if there was a, a, a there was a reason for those types of loans. But what exactly. happened was people knew what they were doing. They wanted to get into these houses that they couldn't they afford otherwise. Couldn't afford it. Exactly. Exactly. And so what they did then was what the what was it? Dodd, um, the Dodd Act. I forget the first name the, of the uh, Dodd Frank. Dodd Frank. Dodd Frank. Dodd Frank Act penalized mortgage brokers and the real estate industry when in fact these people knew what they were doing. They knew what Let they were doing. You, I, I cleaned, mean, I cleaned up. I cleaned up during that period because I was I'm a uh, I'm a notary and I did a mobile notary and so we were doing I I'm saying we I was doing my girlfriend and I we cleaned up I had, we did um going around to getting the documents signed and notarized because they would just overnight them cleaned up during that two yeah. years or so it's like yeah. let me put, yeah. I don't think I honestly don't think that they knew what they were doing because a lot of the mortgage brokers were telling them it's okay you can you can sell it in five years which is true that that's very true and so people were making a lot of money but it's like it's hot potato you get what I'm saying they thought that you that the, the real estate because you remember that was the thing is people said that real estate always appreciates oh it'll continue to appreciate until a two-bedroom condo is five million dollars <laughs> and that's just not true and so people were sold this lie i do believe that but you should not be you should not be trying to buy a house that you can't afford exactly that is unethical exactly. unethical and right. so rule number one exactly. that's rule number one exactly and, and, and so what what real estate brokers made a killing off of Thank unethical you. people unethical yeah. people that want to get rich quick oh you mean to tell me that i can buy this house and then one person start doing it uh, the person start doing it then five then millions and millions of people start doing it it doesn't work and then it made the market it made yeah. the market tank exactly yeah. yeah but again i just i feel like a lot of times we look at the outcome on these types of things and we don't get into the weeds uh for lack of a better word or phrase about why some of these things happen you know it's self accountability that's missing in a lot of these things exactly. you know during that time you had people who wanted the houses and if they didn't go to one mortgage broker that would do it they were going to somebody else that was going to do it you know where they didn't have these interest only loans or things like that it was explained that yep. you were getting an interest only loan you have to make the payments or refinance or whomever you're going to do sell. Yeah, right. Sell. right or this is not going to work or and they said, put me yeah. in the house put me in the house so again it's about accountability and and i agree it's, it's a little bit of both I, I certainly agree there but we have to hold each other hold uh for lack of I me mean, i hate to say it black people it was a lot of black people to hold these black people accountable you know what you're getting into you know you can't afford the home don't get it. I look, y'all know. I I remember during that time, people were asking me, "You gonna sell your house? You gonna re refinance? I mean, like you can get a bigger house?" I said, "No, I love my little cottage. It's a cottage, but guess what? It's paid for." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, um, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, and get you guys' thoughts on that. There, we are back, as I mentioned on Wednesday, uh, with more uh items to talk about here um again we're at the end of the show for tonight any final thoughts ladies you guys oh my gosh so i was really sitting here thinking i'm so excited shelly look i wanted to show you guys shelly showed you hers 
I got my. I don't want to take the plastic off. You guys, I know. I, I did though. I took it off. Though. I don't want to take the plastic off, but I am gonna take the plastic off. It's beautiful. It is you nice, guys. Um, I don't know if you see my T-shirt. What's it say? And you remember, you remember, um, how black What's folks used to like. I'm voting everybody black, y'all. I'm voting everybody Christian. I'm oh, voting everybody nice. I'm voting everybody Christian. These people are crazy. Like, don't like it. And you guys don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid of that. You guys, like, seriously. Um, I, you guys, I love my country. I love my God. I love my constitution. And they are trying to guilt us into believing that there's something wrong with all of them. We Amen. have to be stronger. I keep talking about our cor- courage and our and our bravery and our courageousness is needed more than ever before. So Absolutely. that's all that's all I have to say. And before <laughs> we go, I want to acknowledge additional super chatters. Oh my gosh, guys. Thank you so oh, thank much. You. All right. So let's see who we have here. All right. Thank you so much here. Uh, Laps says, beware. It was reported there may be climate lockdowns coming. Do you think there will be a selection this year? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I said this in our last broadcast. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Yes, Biden is working to oh. put together a lockdown for he's putting together the emergency, some type of emergency uh, climate. Oh, uh, that's what he's talking about. They have to speak. They have right, to where it's same thing, similar to what they did for COVID, but now he's going to say that he needs emergency power for climate change, and oh. they're going to enact some type of awful thing. You're right on it. We're going to talk about that more, so stay tuned. We may mention that on Wednesday. All right, what else? We have who? Abraham. Abraham says, Katie, no one is resentful that you're rich. They are exactly. resentful that you leftists are eroding the opportunity yeah, to get exactly. rich. Yeah, exactly. or even just to live. Like the opportunity exactly. to just survive. Exactly. Right. Well, right. I want to um, I just want to make a quick response to is it lab SWAT? I'm sure I'm can't be pronounce your name, but just like the last scamdemic when they, you know, they had all of these whatever these policies and mandates around voting. Guess who went to the voting poll without a mask? Okay. I got to tell you about that one day. That's what, but guess who went to the voting poll without a mask and I demanded to vote. And I told them if I was not going, they weren't going to let me vote. Then we were going to call the police uh-huh. right then and there because they were violating my constitutional rights to vote. There was no constitutional a mandate that I had to have a mask on to vote. So I did vote um, without a mask. So let me let the record show. Nevertheless, um, my final thoughts would be to just Americans in, in general, you're not dumb. You are not deplorable, certainly, but you're not dumb. Stop being feared by these elitists, these leftists, these people with titles, and because they're on TV or wherever they may be, stop being feared by them. John Legend, they got talent. Okay, he can he can sing and play the instrument. Fine. But don't let them make you feel like you're less than they are or that they have some kind of power over you. As Roxanne used to say, God rest us all, they just people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you're right, Shelly. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just want to um, just follow up on what you said, La- Laps Smart. You know, we, I said this at the last, I think it was our last show. Um, uh, it was in the Daily Caller. Uh, They mentioned how White House officials are weighing whether to declare a national climate Mm -hmm. emergency several months out from 2024. So of the 2024 election. So no telling what we're going to have come out this summer. Again, our mantra for popping politics is to be aware and prepared. That is what we do. Every show is our goal to wake the lions. We're no longer looking at the sheep. We're talking about the lions. Guys, you are our lions. Lions at the gate, be aware and prepare. This is something that's coming up. Also, we've been talking about the anti-car movement we're seeing in cities here like Baltimore and urban centers all across the country. So you rural suburban nights may not be seeing it yet. It's coming. They do not want us driving. They want to take away our freedom in every way they can. One, who has more freedom than you get in your car and you go as you want? That is the next thing. So this this climate uh, emergency, anti-car movement, and, and so much more. So continue to stay tuned to us. 
so we can talk about this, share it amongst our community here on Pop and Politics. And again, as I mentioned earlier on in the show, uh, sound the alarm, sound mm -hmm. the alarm. So again, uh, thank you guys for watching with us. We'll see you on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Until then, count your blessings and live a life of purpose. Bye, Good guys. Night. See ya. Good night. <laughs>